Hey everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Desk Designs. If you have not seen my Dollar Tree hoard, then make sure you watch Tuesday's videos because I have tons of Dollar Tree items and I figured, you know what? I'm gonna show you how I take some of those Dollar Tree items and take them up to a whole nother level and make them look completely transformed and high end. So if you have a Dollar Tree hoard, then you're gonna wanna watch this video. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start off with a Dollar Tree tag, and this one is actually probably the larger out of all of them. Not sure if they have them in right now because this is from my hoard and I've had it forever. So I'm going to flip it on around to the back. I'm going to use white swan, and I'm just going to do one coat to fully cover the tag. I'm going to go ahead and put it face down on some shipping paper trace this out and usually what I would do if I had my cutting mat under it is just glue it to the paper and then use a craft knife to cut out around it and it's so much easier. However, we did not have that so we just cut it out and then we are going to glue this to the back so that our project looks nice and finished um, and if you hear children in the background screaming, um, it's a part of my life. All right, we are going to use this beautiful Roy Cycle decoupage paper. I have about, I think, six in stock. I will order more, but snatchers now. I love how big this tag was because it fit so much of like the main part of this image on there. It was absolute perfection. So once I figured out where I wanted this to be, I'm going to go ahead and get my scissors and just cut around the image, trying not to cut, you know, too much bulk to waste. Now I'm going to try the iron on method. I have been watching a lot of furniture flip videos and recently watched Brandy from the DIY struggles video and they were doing the iron on method and I was like, you know what? Let me try it with liquid patina. Tried it with Mod Podge. So I did two layers of liquid patina. Then I laid my decoupage paper right over it um, after it dried. So this is dried liquid patina. Then I put a Teflon sheet over it. You could also use like butcher paper or like maybe like a tea towel. And I am using my mini heat press from Cricut, but you can use a household iron as well. And I have it on the high heat setting and I am using pressure. I will check the decoupage paper to make sure that it is adhering to the tag and voila it attached perfectly now i follow that all the way up and you guys this was like the smoothest application of decoupage paper i have ever seen but i do have to ask as i was watching videos um especially the furniture flipping the lady had mentioned that applying the liquid patina back over the decoupage paper kind of reactivates it and creates bubbles. I use clear matte by Rust-Oleum spray because that's what they suggested and I still got bubbles. <laughs> so um, let me know if there's like a right way to apply the top coat. So this is after I did two light mists of the clear matte and I was like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna risk it. I put the Teflon sheet back over. I used light heat and I wasn't sure, <laughs> sorry you guys, if the Teflon sheet was going to stick to that paper because I obviously have the clear on top of it at this point and it did it and it smoothed everything back out. It looked gorgeous. I needed something on like that top right portion. It was just like too blank for me. So I just cut some strips of fabric. I wish they were a little longer, but they were like the rolled up like Dollar Tree pieces of fabric. So the length could only go so far, but I made it work. So I just wrapped it around my finger. I'm going to go ahead or sorry, my hand, and I'm going to go ahead and get another piece of fabric and tie that off in the middle. I loved using the like burnt orange one because it brought that out in the feathers of the birds. And then I am going to just hot glue that up on the top right. I also wanted to use some molds, something in the beginning. So after what felt like an hour of deciding what molds I wanted to use, I broke it down to two. 
I'm going to paint them both with two coats of weathered wood. After those completely dried, I did clear them with clear wax and then I'm going to apply the gilded gold wax. I do have all of these products in stock on my website right now and that link is in the description box for you. So I decided on the bird. I mean, how could I not, right? So I'm just going to glue that to the center of that bow. And then instead of putting the twine back on it, I decided to take it up a notch and do a piece of fabric instead. And this completely took this Dollar Tree tag to a whole nother level, you guys. This decoupage paper is absolutely gorgeous. The details in here are stunning. And I love that it's not like super springy. You know what I'm saying? Like pastels and stuff. It's just right. It Look at all of that. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Um, highly recommend getting these big tags because they are great for getting a lot of the image on your surface. This next one, I had these jars from Dollar Tree and for whatever reason, they did not have lids on them. I cleared them with clear matte by rust -Oleum. I wanted a mauve color, you guys. So I went on YouTube and I looked it up and the video showed the gal using brown. So it, it like typed in brown, but it looked like a reddish brown to me, but I was just going with it. I was like, well, it said brown. And then it said mix brown with light blue. So I'm using prom queen. Then it said to use white. So here I am, I'm getting like a grayish color. I'm like, okay, I could kind of see this coming together. I add in the white and I know, I'm like, this is not gonna be mauve. So I decide to get Carnival Red, which kind of has a pink undertone to it. Next time to get an even more kind of like pinkier mauve, I might use Kissing Booth, but I still got like a really beautiful color. I think mauve comes in like all shades. Um, it's kind of similar to French millinery, but I feel like French millinery is more like a light purple. Um, so anyways, here we go. I mixed the color. It didn't come out bad. <laughs> I am going to take a chippy brush and I love to stipple my paints on so we don't see brush strokes. So I am going to do two full coats of our custom color on this and then i'm going to also do the second one in two coats of faded burlap look at how beautiful that dried down Gorga. after those are completely dried i'm going to take big top and i'm going to seal those i wish i would have used um the clear wax because big top does make the paint dry down like a little darker than it is and i really loved that like lighter matte finish of the mauve that we created, but you know, it is what it is. And then of course, Hank, he has the entire house to lay in and he chooses to lay under my desk where my feet go. And I'm like, bud, come on. And he doesn't care. Nope. Doesn't care at all. All right. Back to our project. I wanted to try and put the gold wax on those raised dots and y'all, it was a mess. It like wanted to go everywhere, not just the raised surfaces. So what I did was I just took clear wax, rubbed that on top of the gold wax and took a microfiber cloth and was able to completely wipe that off. If I would have used a paper towel, it would have just like pushed it in. So if that ever happens to you guys, just use clear wax. I'm going to use some basic floral foam from Dollar Tree. I'm going to glue that to the bottom of both of our jars. And then I am going to take some vintage uh, florals from some thrift finds and then also mix it in with some Dollar Tree fillers. Now Dollar Tree doesn't always have like the most beautiful flowers, but their filler pieces are very pretty and I feel like pretty dang high end. So fillers for sure. This is how both of them turned out, but I felt like they needed something more around like where the lid would have gone. Um, so I just grabbed the tool that I usually use. I just love it because it's very soft and it's simple and it doesn't overpower the piece. You could use anything you want, but I thought this really went 
with our vibe here. So this is how they turned out. What do you guys think? I'm not sure if you guys have been to Dollar Tree recently. Do they still carry these? Again, I am just trying to take what is in my stash and flip it in to beautiful decor that I can sell on my website and in my booth. And I love that I was able to utilize the flowers that I've taken from other thrift store finds as well. Hey everyone, just checking back in. I hope you are enjoying this video. Maybe you even have some of these Dollar Tree items. Um, I was actually really happy to utilize some of my stash because it's been a while since I dipped into Dollar Tree. So um, with some of the stuff that I chose to keep, make sure to look out because there will be more videos using these Dollar Tree items. Um, and of course, we'll be making them high end. And you all know the drill. If you're digging me, if you are digging the DIYs, if you are digging this channel, then please make sure to like, subscribe, and leave your girl a comment down below. All right, you guys. Oh, and if you see any of the products used in today's videos, videos, video, those links are down in the description box for you. And with that said, let's go ahead and get into the rest of this video. Well, do you remember when these came out and everybody wanted them? They are actually called wall vases. And I sprayed mine with clear matte by Rust-Oleum. I did not want like that shiny galvanized and I wanted something more for my paint to stick to. I am using the primitive mold in this DIY and the next one. I love this mold because a lot of the images on here are mirrored, as you can see, like the bunny, the leaves, the birds. So it makes it really easy to create a beautiful look. So I already laid out what I want the front of my wall base to look like. And I am just applying my tight bond quick and thick and then my soup, not super glue, hot glue. Remember our tight bond is for longevity. The hot glue is so we could keep working through our project nice and fast. So I'm going to adhere all of those on and then I am going to, I don't know why I decided to show you an, a second time. Okay, just in case you guys didn't catch the first time. Okay, we are gonna take Apothecary and I did not paint the back, it's galvanized metal, it still looks pretty, but I did paint the entire inside outside and now I'm going to stipple my apothecary on the front. I end up doing two coats of this and I like to use chippy brushes with molds like this so that it could get into all of the little tiny details that are on there. Um, you guys, my, my chippy brushes are so ugly, but you know what? They don't flake anymore. Having a pickle break. I like pickles pregnant or not pregnant. <laughs> I'm going to take my clear wax and I am going to apply that because I want to use white wax next and I want to be able to wipe that back. Um, so after I clear the entire thing, I get the white wax and I'm gonna stipple that on, making sure that most of that white wax is going to go on top of my mold. I don't put the white wax anywhere else, just in the front because I'm wanting those pieces to really pop for me. And I like a stippling motion versus a like painting motion, if that makes sense. Then I'm gonna wipe that back with my microfiber cloth. And as I was wiping it back and buffing out like the remainder of the white wax, I don't know why, but I just did not like the thick white wax surrounding the mold. I loved it on top of it, but it wasn't working for me. So I couldn't get in there with my microfiber cloth. So I just grabbed a detailed paintbrush and I went around those molds. Do you, are you guys picking up what I'm putting down? Like, do you see on the top of the birds, the like the white wax on top of it? I don't know why, but I wasn't feeling it. So this is how it turned out. I love apothecary for a spring color and these molds turned out so beautiful. Nobody would ever, ever know the skeleton of this came from Dollar Tree. And I love how it turned out. I think I have like six of the primitive molds left, you guys, in stock right now. Our last one. So y'all know I do not waste paint. And I was not about to waste that custom color. 
So in a pinch, because I did not want it to dry up, I was like, okay, I'm going to go grab something. I found one of these Dollar Tree boxes. <laughs> As you can see, it was in rough shape. So I just put some wood glue in there, some clamps, and I let it set up. I'm going to grab the bunny and some of the flowers from the Primitive Mold. Again, using our quick and thick wood glue and then our hot glue. And I am going to place that little, I love this bunny, by the way, the like leaping bunnies. I feel like there's so many different ways of using them, especially because they're mirrored. Okay, anyway, so we're gonna apply the rest of them, let that set up. And then I took the remainder of my paint. Y'all, DIY paint is so fabulous because <laughs> As you can see, I hardly had anything in that container. So what I did was I sprayed water in it to reactivate all that paint that had dried on the side, and then I brushed it on. And you seriously would never know that some of these spots were like watered down paint because I ended up running out and having to paint the bottom, that inside piece and the inside uh, rim, I guess you could say. I'm gonna take the little snowman, snowmen that you get from Dollar Tree as well. Um, I have the big ones too, but those I get at Hobby Lobby during Christmas time. So do not skip out on these little snowmen, you guys. And then I do paint the bottom of this as well. I'm gonna grab Big Top to seal my entire piece. I just wanted to keep the, I guess, the clear look the same throughout the DIYs. And then taking Golden Ticket, which is a liquid patina, I get a detailed brush and run that on like the lines of the legs. And then I'm just dabbing it on the rabbit. The liquid patina is a lot more liquidy. So, um, I didn't want it to go on heavy. So I'm dabbing it on my finger, dabbing it on the napkin and then on our piece. And this turned out so beautiful. And this was just you guys like a quick and easy DIY, but adding those molds on there and those little snowman legs, it is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you guys for spending your time with me. All these DIYs will be available on my website for purchase. And um, I hope you guys have an amazing weekend with your friends and your family. And I will be back here next Tuesday for another horde video. See you soon. This lighting is good today, you guys. For those of you that watched my hoarding video, look, isn't that so awesome? Look at the details. The little like cherubs. It goes all the way down. I am going to post the other one I made is a size extra large and it's in the same color sand. So I'll put that on my website. And if you guys don't snag it by the end of this evening, then I'm going to put it in my booth. Um, okay. I fed you. What else do you want? Don't stare at me like that. Hank. <laughs> what? He's been a stage five clinger lately. If he wasn't so hairy, I wouldn't mind it that much, but he's a hairball and I swear. Stop, leave me alone. Okay. I just appreciate you all. Thank you guys for watching and always spending your time with me. And I hope you have a good weekend. And yeah, bye.